So since the last video, we now know that the official team welcome party is going to be on Wednesday night at Delta Center. It's still looking very uncertain if I'll be able to be in attendance myself due to transportation concerns, but I will certainly be there in spirit if not in person. Things are getting even more exciting now, and without any branding in place, that feels like the most logical conversation we can have at the moment. Welcome back to the channel, I'm GMPM, let's get started. The online discourse about what the Utah NHL franchise should call itself is as lively as one would expect. After all, this is going to be the team's long-term identity in the league, and we only really get one shot at it. So I think it's important to everybody that we get it right. What right actually looks like, however, is the main point of contention. Utah Yeti seems to be gaining a lot of traction, picked up as a trademark by the Smith Entertainment Group to go alongside Utah Venom, Utah Blizzard, Utah Fury, Utah Outlaws, and the more temporary generic placeholder trademarks. Me personally, I'm still going to the mat for Utah Eagles, although Utah Swarm is also growing on me. Before I go into one other idea I've had these last few days, please indulge me as I make one last attempt to sell you on the Utah Eagles concept. I won't regurgitate the team history that I already went over in the channel's introductory video, but just know that I'll be referencing it at certain points, so feel free to consult it if anything I say doesn't really make sense. This is the main Eagles design that I showed briefly in the last video on the channel. I went with a strictly black, yellow, and white kit to match the Utah Jazz, operating on the notion that the re-implementation of purple as a main collar is still up in the air for them. It works really well with the Eagles branding anyway, and establishes a nice brand solidarity with the team that they will be sharing the Delta Center with. Again, there are two gold stripes on the pants to symbolize the Salt Lake Golden Eagles two Turner Cup championships, and three gold stripes on the socks to symbolize their three Adams Cups in the early years. This is going to be a common thread throughout all of these Eagles concepts. I also want to give the Utah Swarm pitch a shout out here because I wouldn't do anything particularly dissimilar to this for that branding as well. I was going to include Swarm pitches in this video as well, but believe it or not, EA NHL doesn't have a single Bee or Beehive themed logo to use, so I'm just mentioning it here with these. The third jersey I hinted at previously comes to fruition here. It doesn't just adopt jazz purple, it paints itself in it, with an extra nod to the 80s and 90s look with a little splash of green to go with it. This is a shout out to the fans who have been following Utah sports for a long, long time. I'm positive it would be a top seller statewide. The next concept is what I would run with if the jazz reintegrated purple as a main collar and wanted the eagles to follow suit. For this one, I didn't re-implement the green, but I did keep the black from the original design because I don't feel like it's ever inappropriate to use black helmets, pants, maybe gloves on your home uniform, regardless of your team collars, for added sleekness. I'm still upset that the Colorado Avalanche dropped black from their home uniforms for the same reason. I mentioned previously that I want Utah to go in the complete opposite of the really quirky, unconventional designs of the Vegas Golden Knights and Seattle Kraken, and instead put together a look that gives the impression that the team has been in the NHL since the 70s or 80s. The lack of shoulder panels was a very conscious design choice to tap into that same kind of energy as the Detroits and Torontos of the league. But you'll soon see I'm not fundamentally opposed to them. Finally, purple was integrated with the main logo for the primary benefit of the road uniform. I was honestly surprised how much that added to it. For the sake of the old-school Utah hockey fans in here, I had to get at least a shot of the John Deere, Kelly Green concept. I didn't make a yellow kit because I detest yellow as a main collar on hockey jerseys in any context, home or away. And yeah, don't get me started on the Nashville Predators. They had nigh perfection when they first entered the league, and now... Anyway, my goal is to never blind people at a hockey game or render them unable to hear the action over the uniforms. It's the one unfortunate misstep of that era of Golden Eagles designs. This did, however, get me thinking about possible reverse retro concepts. On the subject of Golden Eagles missteps, they also got out in front of the gaudy, overstylized jersey concepts of the 1990s, with this design with the giant wing extending all along the bottom. I like the color scheme, though, and I certainly don't think it's beyond saving, as you can see with this concept. Honestly, this is one I'd like to play with in the future because I think this would be a perfect foundation for a Utah reverse retro design 
regardless of the team branding we end up with for our NHL squad. This is the first time I felt like EA's jersey template number 42 was not the best choice for what I was trying to accomplish, so I'll be sure to circle back to it for sure at some point. Finally, huge shout out to Kikuma in the comments of the original video for even reminding me that the blue and gold design existed for the Golden Eagles. Needing to refresh my memory, I found this mock-up, and while it's brighter than I seem to recall, I took it and blended the design with my own recollection of it, as well as the overall foundation that I had been working on with Utah Eagles concepts up to this point, to produce this look. Frankly, I think this might actually be the best way to go for SEG in an Eagles brand if color scheme consistency with the Jazz isn't critical to them. Now that's it for my Eagles pitches, but I did have a thought yesterday while I was brainstorming these. Hockey social media is brimming with satirical, LDS-themed branding suggestions. Utah missionaries, Utah zone leaders, and several others that are far less tasteful. They were funny the first ten or so times I heard them, but now, even as an atheist myself that is often critical of the church, they're just tiresome, in the way of meaningful discussion, and, if anything, have me wanting to take the entire concept of these satirical names tie them in a knot, and hand them back as something serious. In order to do that, though, they couldn't be explicitly or exclusively LDS-related. It would have to have a certain appeal to those both inside and outside of church culture. The point to be made is that it can be done well, after all. They actually got me thinking, what if you took an event that was LDS-adjacent, but foundational to broader Utah history far beyond just the church? As Wikipedia puts it, On July 24, 1847, Brigham Young and a company of Mormon pioneers arrived in the Salt Lake Valley, where the Latter-day Saints settled after emigrating from Nauvoo, Illinois, and other locations in the eastern United States. Pulling handcarts or driving wagons with oxen or horses, thousands of pioneers made the trek across the plains to a vast desert landscape that became known as the Utah Territory. To members of the church, this was the Mormon pioneers' long journey coming to an end. To everyone living here, regardless of religious affiliation, it was the founding of what is today the state of Utah. Now, take a look at the freshly adopted Utah state flag. Tell me that isn't made to order for a hockey uniform and brand, even if it is a little Colorado avalanche adjacent with its mountain bordering at the top. Someone has to put it to use to that end sooner or later, and is there really any time for it like the present? So with that all said, how do the Utah 47s sound to you? Just putting it out there. Let's keep the conversation going, though. What pitches do you have for the team, or have otherwise gotten behind as the conversation has played out? Let me know down in the comments, and let's talk about it further. That's all for now. If you like this video, then please be sure to let YouTube know all about it with your likes, comments, shares, and especially subscribes. The NHL in Utah is developing quickly, and there's a nice community forming on this channel around it, of which you're more than welcome to be a part. Click the notification bell to know right away when the next video is up. I'm GMPM, and I look forward to seeing you back here soon.